truth from people who had rejected him. Follow along as I read the parable found in Matthew 13, verse 30, uh, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again. And from joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. The kingdom of which, which Jesus speaks is, in this parable is not of this world. Its source is in heaven, and it's the kingdom that Jesus will set up when he comes back to reign. He uses the simile of a treasure hidden in the field to show that the kingdom has great value. A kingdom is, his kingdom is characterized by righteousness, and his kingdom will last forever. And this treasure is hidden in the present time. The greatness of the kingdom of heaven is not obvious. But in this parable, a man finds the treasure and realizes its value. When a man finds this treasure, it is not by accident. I believe that it was Spurgeon who said that if a man is seeking the Lord, it's because the Lord first sought him. The poet who wrote the following three verses, which have been set to music, correctly captures this truth when he says, I sought the Lord and afterwards I knew he moved my soul to seek him seeking me. It was not I found that found, O Savior, true. No, I was found by thee. Thou didst reach forth thy hand and mine in fold. I walked and sank not on the storm-vexed storm sea. T'was not so much that I on thee took hold, but as thou, dear Lord, on me. I find, I walk, I love, but, O oh, the Lord, the whole is but my answer, Lord, to thee. For th thou wert long beforehand with my soul. Always thou lovest me. Martin Lloyd-Jones describes the New Testament picture of the Christian in the following way. They know that God has been dealing with them. God has done something to them. God is moving in their direction. God has interfered in their lives. The man in the parable hid the treasure in the same field where he found it, and his great joy over this discovery caused him to go away and sell all that he has so that he could buy that field. He considered the treasure he had discovered to be of greater value than all his possessions. He knew the answer to Jesus' question, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? In the life of the Apostle Paul, we have an, an example of a man who gladly gave up what he had considered gain for himself in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus. You may turn to Philippians 3 if you care to follow along, and I, I will read the passage there. In uh, Paul's case, what he considered to be gain was not so much possessions as it was pedigree, position, and accomplishment. He had great confidence in his Jewish heritage and his status as a Pharisee. He considered himself blameless in keeping the law. However, after he met Christ on the road to Damascus, his value system changed. Listen to how he describes this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 11. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ." and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the re resurrection from the dead. 
When Christ met Paul on the road to Damascus, he learned that his religious status gave him no favor with God. Even his zeal for keeping the law fell short, way short, of what God required for him to be right with God. A large part of the large value that Paul put upon Christ was his source of, that Christ was his source of righteousness. Christ took away his sins and imputed his own righteousness to him. He stood with a righteous standing before God based on his own, not based on his own good deeds, but through faith in Christ. Christ became so precious to him that he considered his own accomplishments as a loss. In fact, he considered all that the world has to offer as garbage compared to the great value of knowing Christ Jesus. Now, his chief goal was to know Christ, just as Christ did for Paul. He became sin for us, that we too might be made the righteousness of God in him. In Christ, the death on the cross, we remember as we partake of the Lord's Supper. We, we, we are remembering this very thing, that the basis of our righteousness, the basis of his uh, imputation of his righteousness to us. Jesus' body, the, which is represented by the bread, was that in which he bore our sins on the cross. The juice represents his blood by which he redeemed us. And it's his blood that cleanses us from sin as we confess and forsake them. If you are the one who has found the kingdom of heaven to be a treasure and the Lord Jesus Christ to be your only hope of righteousness, you're invited to partake of this, this, uh, this Lord's Supper when your heart is prepared. But you may be here and you don't resonate with this man who found the treasure or with the apostle who reckons Christ to be worth more than all he has, all that the world could offer. If your confidence in being right with God is in your own achievements or your own good qualities, we ask that you refrain from participation in the Lord's Supper. This ordinance was established by the Lord Jesus for those who can have complete confidence in what he has accomplished for them on the cross. To those who no longer rely on their own good deeds, but we trust, we, we urge you, to consider that God, what God has provided, he's provided the only way to be right with him through faith in his son. We would uh, encourage you to talk with one of the elders or, or come to the prayer room after the service where we can visit further about God's provision through his son. Men come forward to service and after we have had time to partake, I will return to lead us in prayer. <clears throat> 